Hello everyone and welcome back to the Deal Mark Show. In today's video we are going to be making a 1930s cape or capelet. We will be using the McCall's Pattern Company pattern in 7340. I am using the PDF reproduction by Lady Morlow and that will be linked below. I am making it for a project called Luna 7. It is a television series pilot that I have written and directed. Luna 7 is a fantasy drama set in the year 1945 and follows Elizabeth Miller, who has offered up her soul in exchange for the chance to save her brother's life. Elizabeth must journey through the Lunascape, the world of the dead, and complete a series of trials set by the ancient gods of old. With only 48 hours before her brother's fate is sealed, time is running out. If you'd like to check that out, there'll be a link to the website down below. Awesome guys, so let's get into it. So we obviously need to start with cutting out the fabric. So I'm just using some cotton uh, cotton, cotton polyester blend curtain fabric um, that I got from Spotlight. So we're going to start with pinning the two back pieces together and just doing a straight stitch with the seam allowance all the way down. I'm using white thread in my machine just because uh, that was what was in it and the, um, the wrong side of the fabric is white. Awesome, now I'm just going to iron it using an iron. Uh, this is because it's curtain fabric, there is like a, a backing on it. Um, the steam part of it doesn't really like it so it was annoying, annoying to try to iron. Anyway, so now we're moving on and we're going to now attach the back yoke piece to the two back pieces. So it's going to be a bit awkward to pin, just take it very slowly and, uh, you know, bit by bit. You can see it here, see how it sort of turns? That is what's going to allow some space at the back for your shoulders. So yeah, tiny bit by tiny bit and the more it goes, the more curved it becomes. And there we go, that's what it looks like all pinned, quite curved, and it does all fit. Um, you know, if, it's, if it doesn't fit, try it again. Awesome, so now I'm just going to stitch it. Now, it is a little bit tricky to stitch uh, when it's curved like this, so you really just got to be very slow. As you can see here, I'm going <laughs> glacially slow, at like three, four stitches stop, pull out the pin, and then going back through and doing it again and again as we make it all the way down the seam. Also guys, don't feel the need to rush when sewing. I know when you look at a lot of YouTube videos that you may feel like they, they sew so quickly and um, and you know when you when you sew a lot you get quite quick at it. Um, but don't don't feel like it's necessary. You know, take your time. Your you know the the tortoise and the hare thing where it's like um, the tortoise won the race or something. I don't know. I'm probably butchering up that saying. Anyway, I'm kind of just rambling on, huh? Um, just because I'm trying to do this all in one take. <laughs> awesome, guys. After that's done, then we're going to now pin the side seam, uh, well, the side pieces, the two front pieces to the back piece at the side seam. There we go. I said that correct. Um... And I, the way I'm pinning is so that when I put it on the machine, the pin, uh, the pin glass ball is what I can pull out. So that's why it looks a bit awkward as I'm pinning. So we are just taking our time, slowly but surely, doing a thorough job. I am making sure that no, th no thread um, or fabric or anything is getting caught, because um, it'd be a nightmare to unpin that. Is Anyway, this is actually a really good pattern for um, you know a beginner. Like I, you know, if you've never sewed before, this might be a good project for you. So as you can see here, I've just put it on my dress form, my size six dress form, and it, um, you know, looks what it is. It needs a bit of a better press, but this fabric doesn't particularly like being ironed. So now I am cutting out the lining fabric. In this case, I'm doing it reversible. So I need to cut off that uh, facing, so I'm just instead going right down and adding a seam allowance to it. 
so that way that I, when I stitch it to the other piece, I can then invert it. You'll see what I'm talking about anyway. And I'm just pinning it because I don't want to cut it off. Um, I feel like that would be a bit of a waste of a pattern if I did that. So I tried it a few times just trying to pin it so that it wasn't, um, uh, so it was like really, really straight. And I was truing my line a little bit as well, making sure that I was definitely doing that straight. I'm sorry that it's not on camera. It's quite tricky trying to film without putting my entire body in front of the camera. It's just got to, you, you kind of got to do it at a sort of an angle. And it um, takes fun. So I'm now just pinning, uh, not pinning, I'm just folding the top of the pattern piece down so that when I cut it, I don't accidentally cut it off. Just like that. So doing everything we did with the first piece to this piece, and then it'll look like this. So just like the first piece, um, without the facing, of course. So now I am pinning the lining fabric to the front fabric, or the main fabric I should say, um, and I'm matching seam and to seam, and I'm pinning at the top. I pin all the way around, so I do the entire top, all around the neckline, all the way down the front. The only thing I'm leaving open is the bottom of the cape, so that way I can turn it inside out, and it then, you know, covers all of the, um, all of the raw edges. Also this was a bit tricky as well because it's it's very heavy because they're both I'm using both curtain fabrics um, which make for a very warm garment I must say because there's a high a high content of polyester um, and polyester was available in the 1930s and well the latter well yeah no it was so yeah, it is somewhat historically accurate, and especially if we're getting to the 1940s, making clothing out of curtains is also historically accurate. So I feel like I am pretty good with my fabric choice here. As you can see with the blue bit here, that's the um, facing that was on the main fabric that I didn't cut out to start off with. I decided to wait till afterwards to cut that off, and um, yeah. So cutting that off, stitching all around the collar, all the way down, you can see what it looks like right here. Um, I actually think it looks pretty stunning. I was actually pretty happy with the colour choices. Uh, the It can't be too overpowering, it's going over a yellow dress and it has to, the main focus has to be a pendant. So as you can see here with my hem, what I do is I just fold it in the sides, right into the middle, inside the open edge, and then pinned it. I left it overnight uh, to make sure that it didn't drop, and it didn't drop at all because it is curtain fabric and it has been got a backing on it, but you know, better safe than sorry. Now as I'm stitching the hem, as you can see here, uh, I had to be really slow and I broke two needles in the process because it's so thick. Uh, my bobbin fabric is the red that matches perfectly to the lining fabric, and the top fabric, um, the top uh, thread is a blue that matches perfectly. I, you can kind of see it here, but in person, you can't actually see the, the stitching at all because it's such a good match. And that's, you know, the perks of, you know, spending the time with the threads in the thread section and looking for the correct colors. And it was pretty easy just stitching right across. I did break two needles. Um, that was because my thread tension wasn't great and I was trying to be too quick, but I didn't film that because <laughs> I don't think a whole bunch of swear words would be um, appropriate for YouTube. And again, you can see how slow I'm going, huh? It's, it's not very fast. And I think it's really crucial, really, to actually take your time with these thicker fabrics. Um, so you don't really want to break it. Anyway, so you can see here, I have the, um, the attachment. I can't think the, the clasp. The clasp and I am stitching it on. I actually decided that this was too much and it was standing out far too much. And it was making with that leather, it was making it look a little bit more 1940s than 1930s, which is not the aesthetic I'm going for for this particular garment. So after stitching half of it on, 
I then do the same, the process of cutting it off. Um, but as you can see, I'm just sort of stitching it here, and I was intending to do it, and you can just sort of see the starting of it. I thought I'd show it in case this is kind of something you want to do. Maybe you want to attach the leather. Um, you need a thimble because I cut my finger on the thread. It wasn't fun. So I switched it off with a blue ribbon and I just burnt the edges of it so that it wasn't, um, uh, it wouldn't fray, which is fantastic when you work with anything sort of polyester or nylon. You know, you can actually just finish an edge by singeing it. Now I spent a ridiculous amount of time, I'm talking maybe an hour trying to <laughs> trying to get that, that clasp perfect on both sides. And here we go guys, this is the finished look. I'm actually so happy with it. It is exactly what I wanted. It is really feminine. It feels very 1930s because I used the 1930s pattern. And because of the method I did with lining it, it is fully reversible. So got a little bit of Red Riding Hood going on here. And guys, so if you just want to, you know, subscribe maybe, you can come and join the little family we've got going on here and stay up to date with more videos. I will be doing a lot of videos coming up for Luna 7 because uh, there's a lot of garments that have been made for it and are being made for it and a few of them I'm filming for the channel. Uh, so yeah, definitely ring that bell button and uh, tap that subscribe button. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram is at Mr. Dion Mark for my personal account. For my professional account, it is at Australian Fig Maker, as well as at Atelier Blue. I hope you're having a great night tonight, guys, and hope you're surviving what's going on. Uh, this is Dion Mark signing off.